Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Say hi to Clyde and Leo. Uh, today we're gonna be making a magnetic feeding ledge. Did you want to, okay, he's scared of you, honey. Um, we're gonna be making a magnetic feeding ledge, not for Clyde necessarily, but if you guys remember Sailor, my rescue iguana, I have been searching all over for a feeding ledge because she prefers to eat up um, as opposed to on the floor of her cage. So I've been trying to find a feeding ledge that is large enough to hold one of those larger no escape plastic feeding bowls or you could just use the hole that you make in the actual ledge but today we're custom making one because i cannot find a feeding ledge that carries or will hold a large enough bowl for her salads um the only one that i can find is that kind of smaller bowl that's like i want to say like this big where are you going um which is just too small for her. I'd have to give her about four salads a day and just continuously be filling that up. So we are going to make one from scratch today. Now, I've never made one of these, um, but I feel like it turned out pretty dang good. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I did also wanna tell you guys that some of these videos, because things need to cure for long periods of time and like, all that kind of stuff I think I might have to do every other Sunday it's just really hard for me to upload two videos on my other channel um, which I will link for you below if you didn't know I had one it's makeup and hair and all that stuff um, and then usually with the animal stuff they're just very involved for the most part they're like I'm like building something I'm painting something I have to do coats of stuff um, I'm building stuff like it just takes like a lot longer and so it's really hard between life the other channel and just all taking care of all my animals to actually get a video up every single week so I think I'm gonna switch it to every other Sunday because I don't want to sacrifice the care of my animals and I also don't want to sacrifice the quality of videos for you guys just trying to rush to get one done so I think I'm gonna switch it to every other Sunday for like the third time in a row and let's go ahead and get started with this magnetic ledge build the only ledges that I can find only accommodate this small bowl that you see on the left here. And like I said, I'd have to give Sailor about four or five salads a day. So I was struggling to find a ledge that held the larger bowl on the right. So we're gonna make one. Now I'm tracing around the top of the bowl because that's the widest part of this bowl just so I can make sure it fits in there. If you want it a little more snug, you might want to measure the bottom of it. I'm doing this ledge in layers so in a perfect world, if this was going in a very moist enclosure, I would just use one giant block of foam and carve everything out. But I'm carving out my first layer here. This is actually a wire foam cutting tool kit that I got off of Amazon for like, I wanna say like 20 or $30. And this actually cuts through the foam super, super well. It's a little less expensive than the ones on Foam Factory. Sometimes this does cut a little slower than I'd like it to, but I, cannot believe that I just figured out about this tool like when I was doing this project because I cut so much styrofoam for my leopard gecko enclosure that I did a couple years ago and this would have made my life so much easier. Now I'm cutting out the center part where the feeding bowl will be going. Next I'm using this to create somewhat of a template for my second layer, you can actually use this to know where your feeding bowl is because I needed two layers of that and you can see that I have a little bit of a hole right there. Um, so in a perfect world again, I would have moved this over so that it wasn't at the edge there. Now I'm cutting out the next layer that is going to be housing the little bowl as well. And I'm going to place those on top of one another and check to see how deep I need it. And actually with these two layers, it was a little too deep. So I went back with another attachment for the wire foam cutting kit and cut that little piece in half that I'd cut out of that second layer. And then I'm gonna glue that onto the third layer so that the feeding bowl sits up right where it should. That's very confusing sounding. Now I'm just double checking to make sure that it is the right height for the bowl and it is so perfect. I am tracing out another ledge here and then I'm gonna be gluing all my ledges together. You can do as many ledges as you want, it's up to you. Um, I'm using the Loctite Power Grab glue. 
to adhere all of these layers to one another. And I have to say, I actually wasn't super pleased with this glue. It said that it like is instant grab and it really wasn't. So I don't know if there's something better out there for styrofoam, but I wasn't super, super stoked on this. As you can kind of see, there's a little bit of a hole there where my bowl will be sitting. So that is exactly where we're going to glue that one little cylindrical piece that I cut in half so that the bowl sits up at the right height. Um, this would concern me a little bit with all these nooks and crannies if I was putting this in maybe a frog enclosure or something that was extremely wet um, in the mold department. But because it's going in more of a drier enclosure, I mean, I wouldn't say arid and dry, but definitely isn't going to be covered in water all the time. This should work. Now I'm gluing that one piece in there so that we have the right height for our feeding bowl to sit in. I cut out a couple more little layers thinking that it would be good to slim this down a little bit on the bottom. So like I said, you can add as many layers as you want. This is up to you and whatever you want your creation to look like. If you leave it the way that I have it, obviously it's flipped upside down, but you can actually create some really cool steps like this. This is kind of what I did for my leopard geckos. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of a hole there down there where the bowl is going to go because I didn't account for the size of that. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in with great stuff, which is the gap filler. Now, I wouldn't recommend this because I actually didn't wait until the glue was fully cured. So it actually ended up pushing my levels apart, as you can see, and that glue did not stick super great, which is why I'm not a huge fan. Um, now we're going into more of the fun part, which is using this other attachment that came with this kit to create some really fun rock textures and edges. And this is something you can get super artsy with. I had a lot of fun with this. With this one specific attachment, you can see on the top here how it creates just like some really cool textures for rock. Now you can see that foam. I actually just picked that off with my fingernails when it was dry. It was as simple as that, but it definitely did not help with keeping my whole project together. Now I'm using the other attachment to this foam cutting kit to create some like crevices and cracks and things like that. So again, you can get super artsy with this, kind of put these, you know, wherever you feel like. Now I'm tracing out where I'd like my magnets to go. And these magnets were supposed to hold around 17 pounds each, or actually it said a minimum of 17 pounds. You'll see in the end that these magnets actually were not strong enough, unfortunately, um, but I used a Dremel tool to kind of create a little void and a little space so I could put my magnet in there. And I used that same glue, which did not work well. Um, I don't know if it was from kind of the remainder of the dust of the styrofoam, but that glue did, did not work well in here. So I want to introduce to you guys Dry Lock Extreme. This is basin, basement and masonry waterproofer. This stuff is awesome. If you get it in the bright white, you can actually tint it. As you can see, it says tintable. And this, you can be colored to whatever color you want. And you can paint your project with this and it waterproofs it. It definitely works great on styrofoam. These are the shades of quick right cement color that I got from Home Depot to color my different dry lock, um, I should say mixtures with. I created different mixtures and stuff. So this stuff works so much better than the sanded grout that I used to use. I used to use sanded grout and it would just peel off. This stuff is actually waterproof and has adhered to the styrofoam super, super well. This is some of the dry lock that I mixed with my quick right to create that color that I wanted. So you can create any color you want. And I highly recommend using a, um, a Tupperware of some sort so that if you create too much, you can save it because that thing of dry lock is around $40. I have to say getting this in all the nooks and crannies was also pretty easy as well. Now I took some of that shade and added a little bit more dry lock to get a lighter color and then I kind of just dry brushed this over the high points of my project to give it some dimension. I really love how this turned out and how dry brushing this worked. Um, it, I think it looked great. You can do, you know, whatever colors you want. Um, this is kind of the finished look of that. And then I'm gonna go in with some dark paint um, in a minute. I actually wish I had a smaller paintbrush here, but I didn't, so I made this work as best as I could. I grabbed some green paint. This is just like water soluble acrylic paint that I got from Home Depot and I'm just dry brushing a little bit of this on to kind of create some mossy areas. Of course I had the camera like not aimed where I needed it to be, but um, you can 
kind of use whatever shades you need to create whatever look you're going for. Now it's time to glue in the magnets. Like I said, this glue really didn't work great for me, but I was also kind of impatient with time and I used a little bit of Flex Seal Clear to cover the magnets just so that they didn't rust or anything because some of my ledges had this on them and I was like, okay, that's a great idea. So that's what I ended up doing and I just painted a thin layer over top and let that dry. My magnets, even though they say they hold up to 18 pounds or no less than 18 pounds, it says, they are not sticking super well, even if I just do it on the side here. So I think the magnets that these types of things have are even crazier and more heavy duty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and take these out and I am going to uh, redo the magnets on this <laughs> and see how we do. Okay, so I am still looking for somewhere that I can buy magnets for a reasonable price that are way heavier than this because sadly this would not stay if Sailor <laughs> got on this ledge. So got it to work out great other than the magnets which is a huge part of this. So uh, back to the drawing board with the magnets I guess. Um, if you guys know of any websites where you can buy like industrial strength like good ass magnets for not an arm and a leg please let me know. Um, but everything I'm finding is like extremely expensive and then that kind of defeats the whole purpose of a feeding ledge and i know they're out there um so share your source if you have one thanks so much for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video i'm so sorry i failed you oh i gotta try again with your eating ledge i'm sorry baby girl i was so excited to watch you eat from it this morning I promise.